Hello friends. Today we are discussing aircraft characteristics related to airport design. One of the great challenges for airport planning and design is creating facilities that accommodate a wide variety of aircrafts. And aircrafts vary widely in terms of their physical dimension and performance characteristics. The important characteristics which affect the planning and design of airports are type of propulsion that is the engine, size of aircraft, minimum turning radius, minimum circling radius, speed, aircraft weight, wheel configuration, jet blast and noise. And we shall discuss each of these characteristics briefly in this session. First is type of engine. Size, speed, range, weight and capacity of aircraft are dependent on type of propulsion and thrust generating medium. It is either piston engine, turboprop, turbojet or turbofan. Piston engine aircraft is a propeller driven and powered by gasoline fed reciprocating engines. Turboprop is also propeller driven and it is powered by turbine engines. Turbojet obtain thrust directly from a turbine engine and in case of turbofan, a fan is added in the front or rear of a turbojet engine. The runway length required to operate a particular aircraft, whether it be a takeoff or a landing, can vary such considerably based on aircraft engine performance and total operating weight as well as by the local environment and atmospheric conditions. Introduction of cabin class aircraft such as Douglas DC-3 in the mid 1930s resulted in the need for airports to construct longer paved runway from a shorter grass strip that previously existed. The introduction of aircraft equipped with turbofan and turbojet engine in late 50s added requirement for longer and stronger runways, facilities to mitigate jet blast and policies to reduce the impact of aircraft noise at and around the airport. Jumbo jet or heavy aircraft such as Boeing 747 were introduced in, in late 1960s and they added new requirement for runway specification as well as terminal area design requirements for accommodating large volume of passenger and cargo. And most recently, the introduction of the world's largest passenger aircraft, the Airbus A380 as well as the smallest of the certified general aviation jet aircraft continues to affect design specification of airport, airfield and terminal areas. Size of aircraft. Size of aircraft includes length, wing span, wheelbase and height. The length of aircraft is defined as the distance from the front tip to of the fuselage or main body of the aircraft to back of the tail section. The length of the aircraft is used to determine the length of an aircraft parking area and also the size of the hangar. The wing span. Wing span is the distance between tips of the wings of the aircraft. And this is used to determine the width of aircraft parking area and gate spacing. This is also used to determine the width and separation of runway and taxiways on the airfield. The wheelbase, distance between the main gear and the nose gear and also the wheel track that is the distance between the outer wheels of an aircraft main landing gear. Now these two are important to determine the turning radius of an aircraft and this basically affects the design of taxiway turnoff, intersections and other area on an airfield which require an air aircraft to turn. The height of the aircraft taken from the main gear to the top of the tail and this is important to decide the size of the hangar or height of the hangar gate. So all the dimensions are important and these should be studied before planning or designing an airport. Another characteristic of the aircraft which affects the planning and design of airport is the minimum turning radius and this is the radius with which an aircraft can take a complete turn on ground and it depends upon the wing span and the configuration of the wheels. It can be 
estimated from geometry of the wheels and size of aircraft a line is drawn from the axis of the nose gear when it is at maximum angle of turn and another line is drawn from the center of the main gear and the point where these two line intersects is the center of rotation and distance of this point from the tip of the farthest wing that is the radius of the turn this will be the radius of the turn of aircraft theoretically it can also be estimated from this equation b into 1090 minus beta plus t by 2 beta here is maximum steering angle that is this angle and b is the wheel base of aircraft this is the wheel base that is the distance between center of the nose gear and center of the main gear this distance is the wheel base and t is the wheel track of the aircraft that is the distance between outer wheels of the main gear this is t so if you know these dimensions from the aircraft geometry you can find out what would be the turning radius of an aircraft the value of beta is 65 to 82 degree for different class of aircrafts theoretically it can be 90 degree also but in that case there will be maximum wear and tear of nose gear and the wheel of the main gear and therefore this value for most of the aircraft is capped between 45 to 65 degree this for b767200 angle of beta angle of maximum turn of nose gear is 65 degree and it will have radius of 112 feet when this angle beta is 82 degree for example in case of md90 aircraft this r reduces to 66.5 feet so that is the minimum turning radius of an aircraft next is the circling radius the circling radius of an aircraft is the minimum radius with which an aircraft can make a complete round in the space and that should be understood the difference between turning radius and circling radius turning radius is the radius at which the aircraft makes a turn on the ground whereas circling radius is when it takes a turn in the space and that depends upon the size of aircraft and the engine of the aircraft for a small general aviation aircraft under vfr conditions it is 1.6 kilometer for bigger aircraft let us say two piston aircraft under vfr condition 3.2 kilometer and under ifr conditions it can be 13 kilometer for jet engine aircraft under ifr conditions this can be up to 80 kilometer also now this distance is important to plan distance between two airports and also the height of the structures within the airport boundary in case of failure of the takeoff next is aircraft weight the length of a runway depends upon the weight of aircraft during landing and takeoff and the weight of aircraft can better be studied under five different components operating empty weight payload zero fuel weight maximum structural takeoff weight and maximum landing weight this operating empty weight is the weight of an aircraft and the flying personnel just before takeoff it does not include the weight of the passenger or baggage and fuel and this weight for a small aircraft is quite significant for short range piston engine aircraft this empty operating weight can be up to 70 percent of total weight of the aircraft at the time of takeoff whereas for long range turbo engine aircraft it can be up to 45 percent of the total weight of the aircraft at the time of takeoff payload that is the load which generates revenue and this includes the weight of passengers weight of baggage cargo and mail in passenger aircraft lot of space under the seats remain unutilized and therefore the payload remains less than the maximum structural payload and this payload can also be from 14 percent to 21 percent of total weight of the aircraft at time of takeoff 14 percent for long range turbo engine aircraft and 21 percent for short range piston engine craft like douglas geo fuel weight is the upper limit of payload above which all additional weight in the aircraft should be in the form of fuel and fuel is required for making the trip as well as some reserve fuel to meet any emergency the fuel required to make the trip depends upon the payload distance to be traveled speed of travel altitude of travel and 
other meteorological conditions during travel. This fuel to make trip also depends upon type of aircraft. For Douglas like DC-4 piston aircraft, this is around 1000 liter per hour, whereas for Boeing 707 turbojet engine aircraft, it is almost 10,000 liters per hour. Now this fuel to make trip can vary from 6% for short range small aircraft to up to 35% for large aircraft, 35% of total weight of the aircraft. Reserve fuel is required to meet any emergency and that also depends upon the alternate airport, distance of the alternate port in case of emergency. And this can be up to 3 to 6 percent of total weight of the aircraft. Then comes maximum gross takeoff weight. This is the weight of the aircraft at the time of takeoff. And therefore, it includes empty operating weight, the payload, weight of the fuel required to make the trip and reserve fuel. And this weight has also changed considerably over the years. The maximum gross takeoff weight for a DC-3 was 12,000 kg in 1935. Boeing 737, which was introduced in 60s, it had a structural gross takeoff weight of 101,000 kg. Boeing 787, which is also called Dreamliner, it has something like 227.9 tons at the time of takeoff. The last component of weight of aircraft is maximum structural landing weight. This is the weight of the aircraft at the time of landing. And therefore, this weight is takeoff weight minus weight of the trip fuel, assuming that the landing is at the scheduled airport. Airport payments are designed for, for gross takeoff weight of the aircraft, whereas landing gear of the aircraft is designed for maximum structural landing weight. Next is wheel configuration. Depending upon how the wheels are arranged in the main gear and the nose gear of an aircraft, wheel configuration can be a single wheel like this when you have two wheels at the rear and one wheel at the nose or dual wheel when you have four wheels in the main gear and two wheels in the nose gear or it can be dual tandem also. For example, Airbus 320 has a dual wheel combination, four wheels at the rear and two wheels at the nose gear. Boeing 767 has eight wheels, dual tandem wheels here and in nose gear two wheels. Whereas MD-11 or Douglas 10, DC-10 aircraft has 10 wheels. These are four plus four plus two wheels at the main gear and two wheels nose gear. Boeing 777 has 12 wheels in the main gear that is called triple tandem wheel configuration. There are six wheels and six wheels here and two wheels the nose gear. Can be complicated also Boeing 747 has 16 wheels here and two wheels here like this and this is called double dual tandem wheel configuration. Similarly, Airbus 380 has 20 wheels in the main gear and two wheels as a nose gear and that is called dual tandem plus triple tandem. These are 20 wheels here and two wheels at the nose gear. Now landing gear configuration plays a critical role in distributing the weight of an aircraft on the ground and therefore has a significant impact on design of airfield payments. Another important consideration in the design and planning of airport is the speed of the aircraft. And the speed of aircraft can be defined in two ways, that is cruising speed or ground speed and air speed. Cruising speed is the speed of the aircraft with respect to the ground when the aircraft is flying in air at its maximum speed, whereas air speed is the speed of aircraft relative to the wind. Aircraft performance data generally considers two types of air speeds. One is true air speed and another is indicated air speed. The pilot obtains his speed from an air speed indicator and this indicator works 
by comparing the dynamic air pressure due to the forward motion of aircraft with respect to the static atmospheric pressure. As the forward speed is increased, the dynamic pressure also increases. This indicator measures the difference between the static pressure from the aircraft static ports and the ram pressure from the pitot tube. Now, this difference is the dynamic pressure which translates into a reading on this indicator. The speed of the aircraft has considerably improved in last 60 years. It was around 300 km per hour in 1935 when DC-3 was flown and it is now almost 960 km per hour for a Boeing 747 aircraft. And even for supersonic aircraft like MiG-21, the speed of the aircraft is around 2100 km per hour. Jet blast is a typical characteristic of turbojet and turboprop aircrafts. These aircrafts eject hot exhaust gases at relatively high velocities and these gases strike on the pavement and as you know the bitumen is partly soluble in kerosene or gasoline and therefore bitumen pavements are adversely affected by the heat and blast from the commercial jet transporters. Therefore cement concrete pavements are preferred particularly in area where there is a chance of fuel spillage or high jet blast. Most of the civil aircrafts have the tailpipe inclined at an angle of about 2 degree relative to the pavement surface and the height of the engine above the pavement surface is about 1.5 meter and therefore retorting effect of the commercial jet transport on the bitumen pavement is practically nil. But military jet aircrafts they have tailpipe at a steeper angle and the engine close to surface. Therefore, they cause more damage to the pavement if it is surfaced with bitumen materials. Noise. All aircrafts make lot of noise during landing and takeoff. More disturbance is caused during takeoff than during landing. And the problem is more severe in case of jet aircraft than with the conventional engines. As far as possible, the runway should be so oriented that there is no urban development in the area under the approach flight of the aircraft. So friends, thank you very much for watching this video. These are the important characteristics of aircraft which must be studied before planning and design of an airport.